And now we get to present day and we see kind of the mess that the government has made when it comes to borrowing money and lending money. That's really what we're talking about. What's up, everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Flow <laughs> like water, cut like ice. Ooh, 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 ooh. Come on, man. <laughs> Somebody tee me up. Call me T Woods. <laughs> Come on, man. Go ahead with it. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm Are we good? Sorry, Are, we good get, just, Are we good you know to get the show started? Can we get the show started? You know Is that possible? Is it possible? You know. to get, Is it possible? Just to get the show started. Super hot fire flames. Oh my gosh. Come on, man. Y'all need to y'all need to stop it. I don't know what to do y'all with this need guy. To stop it. I don't know what to you do. Know. I don't know what to do with this guy. But anyway, welcome back, all of you that are joining us to another episode of the Good Life Visual Audio Podcast, where we talk all things health and wealth. I'm one of your hosts, C Muzan. I got this guy. Rapping hot fire flames, ooh, coach ooh, of the ooh, year, ooh, 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 ooh. dropping bars all day long in the That's building. Right. That's coach, right. coach could be in the building. Say what's up, coach. What up, though? You see, yes. the microphone's been holding me back, but quite <laughs> frankly, you know, all I do is throw it in the end zone, call me young Dak. This guy's got bars for days, <laughs> he's got bars oh, for days. Man. Uh, yeah. this guy, what's up, everybody? TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook group, uh, Health and Wealth for Busy Professionals. We're excited to be back with you guys for another uh, episode to get a chance to have another conversation around health and wealth, get a chance to talk about all the good things, uh, that are happening in your foundations of health and wealth, and uh. We want to come drop drop some more nuggets on you for for tonight for tonight's episode mm. episode, episode mm. 100, 143. We appreciate 43. everybody rocking with us for one hundred and forty three episodes. Feels great. Uh, we got another hundred and forty three more to go. No, I mean we're never stopping. I don't know. We ain't gonna stop. Up. Oh, let me get this guy over here on tickety tock. Cool. Um, brother, how's your week been, man? What's what's been going on this past week for you? Been a good week. Week has been fantastic, bro. Um, well, you know, for the most part, it's been a little dreary here out in LA for the first time in a long time. Oh, uh, you know, oh. yeah, I know, I know, I know. Get your oh. tiny violins out, go ahead and tear oh. cry tears, you know. Oh. Uh, but you know, it, it makes a difference, you know, it's all of it is relative, right? It's all relative. So, you know, been uh having this really make refinements to uh the 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 daily schedule to met, keep mo- uh energy high um and put things routines in place that'll keep me rolling uh even when all it feels like is cuddling up you know ch- cooling at home and, and and relaxing and you know that's 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 one of the key things like at work you sneak by for a couple of hours they'll still pay you oh for sure you know as an entrepreneur in the right at you no, nah, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. So I was just having this conversation with one of our coaching clients earlier today, literally earlier today. She's going through a rough transition in her life, uh, but she's in she's in the real estate side of things. So mm-hmm. right, very entrepreneurial, right? Like no boss, no, you know, you got to make it happen. And uh, we just had the conversation about clearing up our mental to be able to go do the work that's necessary which is what people that have a job don't have to do. If you have a bad day or you're sitting in a rough place mentally or emotionally, physically, any of those things, you can still get up and go to work and make a paycheck. Like (laughs) just at CVS yesterday and the girl was super duper sick behind the counter. See it all over her face. And I was like, they're going to like, they're going to send you home. Like, and she was like, ah, at the end of the shift, whatever, like I'm almost out. But just thinking about it, that like, she had to show up to work like she had to show up and she didn't get a day off. Right. Like, and that's kind of how it is as the entrepreneur. It's like, Hey, we don't get days off like that. Like you're not feeling great. You still got to be able to figure out yourself to put yourself in the position to go off and bring in some income for you and your family. So 
Yeah, that's right, man. And honestly, those like managerial positions at like box chain places and whatnot, man, worst positions, worst positions, because you don't get paid that much, but you they work hard, man, and they pick up the slack. They're the reason why the owner doesn't have to show up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they are the reason why the owners don't have to show up. And I'd be like, man, I would hire you in a heartbeat. <laughs> it worked, for real i'm like man y'all work hard we did a uh we did a show on mlms and network marketing right and right that's a, a pyramid right there right the owner's never showing up and you'll never be the owner you're just the manager and you yep. don't get paid a lot and life is probably not the greatest for you but anyway that's why you're here watching yep. the show yeah yep. that's what we're here to do um my week went well, has been well. Things were rocking and rolling. Business is good. Uh, continuing to stay busy. A lot of conversations. That's why we're happy to have a financial conversation or a debt conversation tonight. That's what the show topic is going to be. Uh, but I've just been having a lot of financial conversations. feels like uh, a lot of people going through a bunch of different things financially right now. A lot of different scenarios that we're seeing um, from transitions to wanting to purchase things to um, businesses slowing down to uh, just basic stuff that we always talk about, just losing track of our money, not budgeting, not tracking our money. We're coming into the holiday seasons. People are a little concerned. They're going to have to put stuff on credit cards and you know, savings isn't where they want it to be. So we're, just, we're having a lot of conversations these days, Will, wills and trusts, people thinking about uh, their you know elder parents and you know, taking care of them and making sure their affairs are in order. And there's there's just a bunch out there in the financial front that people I know need a lot of guidance on. So uh, we're, we, we've been very, very busy. Um, but being busy is a blessed position because I remember when I wasn't busy. <laughs> that's right. And that's not fun as an entrepreneur. <laughs> cool. Uh, thanks for everybody tuning in to Good Life. We always love having you here. We appreciate it. Uh, if you want more, though, just know you can catch us over on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Uh, go over there and subscribe. We, 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 when was this? July-ish, right? So maybe five months ago, depending on when you're hearing this, we transitioned all of our content onto uh, a, sp- uh, a specific YouTube channel for us because before it was on Kabi and I's personal channels, like our brand channels, but we moved it over to the Good Life Visual Audio Podcast YouTube channel. So if you did not subscribe yet, go over there and subscribe. That's where you can catch all this content, uh, all this long form, these podcast episodes. They're over there, but we also put out a bunch of shorts and things over there on YouTube, but also Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all your favorite streaming platforms too, like Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Uh, Again, if you just Join our Facebook group, Health and Wealth for Busy Professionals. Uh, We go live in there every week, obviously, for these episodes. But we also do uh, some um, uh, small, what do they call Like webinar series, like mini, mini, mini mini, webinars. Yeah, mini Mini webinars webinars that we're turning into like Q&As. So you can chat with us one-on-one. We're doing workshops, giving you insider tips. Again, it's not just a group, it's a community for self-improvement and for us to get to living the good life. So join us over there on Facebook. If you're watching on Instagram, you see it pinned right there. Go ahead and join us in the group. That's where you get access to us. Uh, I think we had a question in our group we said we were going to address uh, right now. Do you have it pulled yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. Within, we're, we're, no, I don't. No, I don't. Okay. We'll address it within, within the show, though. Within Perfect. It's within the show. Perfect. We'll dive in and address it during the show. Uh, But for now, quick word from our sponsor. That's right. Are you ready to level up your style? The Good Life Visual Audio Podcast store just dropped its first piece of merch with our exclusive Follow the Money t-shirt. It's not just clothing. It's a statement of your commitment to mastering your health and wealth. So be be part of the movement and get yours today. Just visit the Good Life Visual Audio Podcast store using the link in our description. And remember to always follow the money. Follow the money, yo. Follow the money. That's what we do over here, man. It's a great episode for that. Fantastic follow the money episode. You know, so get us all on the same track. Go cop yourself a shirt while you're at it, y'all. That's right, man. Well, these are clean, honestly. I don't know. Yeah, these are clean. You see them. There, we go. there you go. See them on Instagram. See them on TikTok. <laughs> Look at that. Clean. They're dope. Real They're soft, dope. too. 
That's right. We got to set up our TikTok store so people can get it on TikTok. But you're right. We'll get that. Hey, guys, send us a message. Let us know. We'll make sure we get that rolling. That's right. That's right. Uh, into the show, onto our segment we call Shop Talk. Shop Talk. Diddy, diddy, diddy. It's coming. We're making it happen. Yeah. Guys, by low, day. Budget, low budget. Low, <laughs> low budget, budget. Low budget. <laughs> you know, we can't be hiring writers. Writers <laughs> were on strike. They was negotiating all extra strong guys. Uh, you know, we we doing what we can, man. We doing what we can. Week by week, we make improvements, y'all. Week by week, we make improvements. That's right. uh, but on today's Shop Talk, uh, talking a little bit about an article that we saw, uh, robot-powered meat-free fast food chain is being started by the Chipotle founders. It says here the founder of Chipotle, Steve Ellis, is making news with his latest investment, a food spot called Colonel. It's a meat-free restaurant that serves food like veggie burger salads and uh, acai bowls. And uh, it's using robots in place of staff. Plan is to have robots do most of the heavy lifting with just a small crew putting on the final touches. The first location will be opening in Manhattan, it's a robot powered meat free fast food chain. How is this how is this going to play out for society? What are your thoughts on this coach? Uh, Christopher, I have one thing to say about this and um are they going to be selling the cloned fake chicken there too? Mm, probably. <laughs> Guys, you know what I'm going to say. Why does America hate real food? What's going on? What's going on? We think we can do better. It just don't taste good enough. We know we have enough because there's a ton of waste going on. Ton of waste going on. And we choose not to do things that will elevate, you know, the level of efficiency that we have with our food system. So everybody will be well fed. There's plenty of food out here, man. And I don't have the stats right off the top for you guys. I'll have it next time. I apologize. I do better. But plenty of food out here to feed if we just did things a little efficiently. It seems to me like perhaps maybe just like curing diseases, conditions, if you will, chronic conditions are not necessarily the best business model out there. According to an article, again, I'll do better, guys. I got to bring it. I bring the link for you guys, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forgive you. But just know, you know, this is something you can also look up. Where do we stop, guys? I think more than anything, not only do we have to protect ourselves, but we also have to look out for the people that are dependent upon us in terms of being able to deliver real food. There's a war on real food. There's a war on real money. There's a war on... Realness. Dare I say it? The family unit, guys. Mm. And um, I just don't understand why. So I think you do. The I status think... symbol has changed. It's a well functioning, healthy family unit backed up by some real money, not fake currency. And they own their means of generating food, energy. Guys, the status symbol is changing, and I think a lot of people are on board. Except for the people that profit off of it not being that. Wow. Follow the money, right? We talked, we we just talked about it. And that's what this is, that's what this sounds like to me. Again, um, we know we've done shows on this, we've talked about it. Our modern food environment is jacked, right? Like they don't care about feeding us things that are proper. We know that you go to another country and half of the stuff you know some of the things we have here are banned in other countries the things that they are adding to uh all of our food uh chemicals or whatever they are uh, are not benefiting and and actually you know progressing our health and this chipotle story this chipotle founder uh again fo follow the money um it's so just from a restaurant perspective y'all the two the the two the two main things that are your highest costs in a in a restaurant is your food cost right your cost of goods and your labor those two things they move the needle the most that's where most of the expense goes inside of a restaurant so take this now 
model, this fast food model that will remove meat and more than likely produce whatever fake meats are right, like being being sold. And they're removing labor in place of robots, right? They're putting robots in place so they don't need people, so they don't have to pay a bunch of staff. And their food cost is probably going to be incredibly low. Uh, whether they're feeding us fake meat or whatever the case is, that's you guys if you want to go there and, and try the food. Um, <laughs> but this is definitely a money play. And it'll probably be very profitable if they uh, if they can execute properly on it. We said this about restaurants a long time ago, though, that like there's not going to be a lot of workers inside of restaurants. Like it's not going to make sense to pay someone to flip a burger twenty dollars an hour. And over time, that's what people are going to want. They're going to want more and more money to have a livable wage. Well, big companies are going to be like, well, that's dumb. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually just going to spend the hundred and fifty thousand dollars up front to build the robot. And we don't have to worry about your salary, your days off, your vacation, your health care, your workers comp, your training. You don't got to worry about any of that stuff. So it'll be a more efficient model over time. I don't know about the no meat thing, right? And the fake food thing, but definitely a money play. Follow the money, y'all. That's the key. Follow. 1,000%. Uh, 1,000%. And, and Chris, OG, to your point, man, today that's part of the conversation we're going to talk about. Why is it that we're going to need more and more dollars to purchase less quality mm. food? Mm. Right? That's what we're going to, part of what we're going to talk about today. And ladies and gentlemen, industry, that's called a tease. <laughs> tease it up tease it up let's dive in before we get to that let's dive into our next uh our next uh segment of the episode called two by two two by two that's right y'all so now it's time for our two by two segment uh where we give tips and advice to entrepreneurs and business owners today uh, we're talking about a bunch of different things uh coach dive in what's today's two by two about where do we start on this on this two by two Today's two by two guys sets us up actually for the conversation. And that's what we're looking at. What are the top five industries, right? That we should look at in terms of positioning ourselves to take advantage of the trends, the current market trends uh, in the best way possible. Just as Jeff Bezos noticed that there was a trend in terms of online sales going on put all his eggs in the basket and uh, never looked back. And now he has a fully operating bionic buddy. <laughs> body. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, these are some of the interesting ones that we saw, man. And then I love to get your thoughts on it. OG yeah. uh, guys, cremation. Ooh, a bit dark. I understand, but listen, get out your feelings and let's get into the bread. You know, don't let their story interrupt your glory. Okay. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Cremation is up 5% in the 70s. 60% now are choosing cremation. Get in there, dollar, dollar, baby. Uh, I'll just add my two cents onto that real quick. Um, the funeral industry has always been big in general. It's always been a ton of money. It's just kind of morbid, so people don't go that direction. But that's why funeral homes, right, will be in business for a very, very long time. <laughs> because they make a ton, a ton of money on that side, limited market. This cremation conversation, though, also kind of goes into some of the money stuff when we talk about like life insurance and those things. I really also think that there's just there's a lack of finances. So people are taking the easier route to be like, hey, let's not go through all the stuff. Just cremate me. Um, and uh, it could be a money play also. Right. Maybe we're talking a lot about money on this episode, but follow the money on that one, too. But it is it is an industry people might want to take a look at. Absolutely. Along along with you have to be under uh, a rock of some sort to not notice the huge jump in interest in gambling, particularly sports gambling. So esports is huge. ESPN bet just launched. Um, and it wasn't long ago. I actually re remember them reprimanding one of their analysts for even mentioning a betting line. Now they've launched ESPN uh bet and i believe like less than five years later so <laughs> things change very quickly uh those interested in the land play there is the ev charging stations 
right? As an opportunity, the EV charging stations, obviously this is this is a trend that's going to continue to grow uh, and we're going to need more and more and those things need to sit somewhere. So that's, that's a play there as well. Um, we've also talked about one here that's particularly interesting uh, is services around baby boomers as they come to retire here. What are the things that they're going to need, right? And things that they're going to give up uh, such as small businesses that you could perhaps um, look look into or acquire, et cetera, right? So those are the ones, OG. That's awesome. Uh, this is this is a note because again, this this segment we talk we're talking to the entrepreneurs out there, the people that are transitioning to get into some form of we talked about the BI side, right? Get into that part of the cash flow quadrant where you're building a big business or you know you have some type of system that you take over. Uh, quote by Wayne Gretzky, I believe. Um, I don't skate to where the puck is. I skate to where the puck is going. Is the is is the mindset behind all of these midterm investments of like kind of where where you're going to invest money, what business you're going to dive into. A mindset that you got to be in is don't look at where we're at right now. Look at where we're going. Because it takes a little bit of time to be able to build the business and get it off the ground. So this is the sweet spot of business. You don't want to be too early, right? But you can't just buy into the right now because you're too late. That's really the sweet the sweet spot in business. Anything this happened, we just watched it happen with, I think I made a TikTok about this, right? Just in the pandemic, what happened to all the truckers, crypto, real estate, like all the things that were hot two years ago, three years ago, that everyone flooded to, it was already too late. That's why it's not here right now. That's why the market has flipped. That's why those, those industries are struggling. So a lot of times when you're thinking about what business, where are you headed, think about where the puck is going and look out five years of what might be needed. That's why the thing that excites me the most on that list is the baby boomer side of like, oh, baby boom. So there's a, there's a statistic that says... Uh, well, obviously, we know the baby boomer generation was like the largest population, right? 1946 to 64. Those were the dates. Um, 79, 80 million people born in the U.S. during that time. Another like 20 million immigrated here. So that generation, 100 million strong, right, in our country. Um, and any company that got ahead of the baby boomers actually became a very successful company. If they catered to that demographic, got a little bit ahead of it, saw that there would be a need, those were the businesses that 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 really took off. You can go all the way back to Gerber Baby Food. You can go to Mattel. You can go to certain types of cars. Uh, all these things were happened in business because they got ahead of the baby boomers. Well, baby boomers right now are going through a bunch of stuff. The small business owners that are baby boomers are trying to retire and sell their businesses. They have no one to sell them to, most likely, because they just were very good workers. So they might have small businesses that have, you know, four, five, six employees. They've been running it for 15, 20, 25 years. They got a great name in their marketplace, in their space, but they got nobody to give their business to if they shut it down. They got nobody to give it to. So there's opportunity to buy businesses on that side of the baby boomers. Then, like you said, some services for baby boomers. Think of like the healthcare side. I talked about it. Like, you know, we're having a lot of these conversations around end of, end of life planning, estate plans, those types of things, getting your affairs in order, life insurance, retirement accounts, all that good stuff. Well, who's going to service baby boomers that like get sick? Like our like uh, medical industry, right? Like home health and um, uh, hospice care and those types of things. They're very like underserved right now. Like there's not a ton of them out there and there's not a lot of resources. So who's going to create something to service elderly or the baby boomers as they age with their health, right? Who's, who's, who's going to be there for them. So creating some of these services and thinking about those entrepreneurs that are baby boomers, that's really the exciting part in this list that we kind of put together um, as what's up and coming. And I think that's really skating to where the puck is. What are your thoughts on that, man? Yeah, I think it's spot on. But two by two is over. Let's go on. The two by two is <laughs> over.
well then let's well then well then let's dive into why you're why you're mad, coach. There's there's uh, lot- uh, <laughs> Listen, <laughs> whatever that was, tell us about it. <laughs> yeah, let me start by a real headline, ladies and gentlemen, a real headline. And what is that headline, you ask? Well, that headline just happens to be demand for unvaxxed sperm spikes. <laughs> Women are turning to shady Facebook groups looking for donors who refused to get the COVID shot. Wow. Wow. Is this thing on? Guys, listen. Something that's been bothering me recently, man. You know those friends. The ones that during the, let's call it, the great, whatever you want to call it. I can't think of a great name right now, but it's totally the, the fraud of two, of 2020, right? The fraud of 2020. The great, uh, 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 very divisive, very, we were, guys, do you remember we were all supposed to die? <laughs> if you turned on the news at any point in that time, mainstream news, we were basically on the verge of global collapse. We were basically on the verge of global collapse. And friends who were, you know, they're like, oh, man, let me look. Uh, I just I just, I want to keep my job. Blah, 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 blah. Listen, I understand. I get it. I get it. You are entitled to keep your job by going and getting that thing in you. And y'all know what I'm talking about. The big. Mm. Mm. Pause. The big. Mm. Pause. Right. Mm. Get it in your arm. You walk. Yeah. God. Now, folks turning around like, man, I didn't want that thing anyway. They couldn't afford it. Whoa, 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 whoa. You were first in line for seconds, my friend. (laughs) Josiah, you were first in line for seconds. Don't you play that now. But you see, it's very telling of a lot of individuals, unfortunately. And it's when you turn up the heat, when you turn up the heat, they start jumping. Jumping out the pot into the frying pan. But you keep that to yourself. I'm tired of it. You weren't on the train. You never was, you traitor. You Benedict. (laughs) Brutus. I think we know why you're mad. I think we know. And you have a right to be mad, sir. There's I'm a lot of... Even, I'm not even that mad. But you have a right to be. Because <laughs> unvaxxed sperm is going for so much in the world. Uh, Crazy. Okay. It's wild. It's wild. But either hey, way... My brothers, my brothers who's still strong during this time, hit me up. We got to go ahead and make sure we control for prices. That's right. That's right. <laughs> control for prices <laughs> that's too much that's too much uh but at least we know why why you're mad uh another break another word from our great sponsor that's right ladies and gentlemen listen are you a busy professional looking to level up your health and performance look no further than our sponsor cut the noise they offer personalized nutrition tailored movement programs and stress managers techniques to help you look good feel great and perform at your highest level mentally and physically. You can join the end of year challenge, access their app and become part of the community for just a dollar for not much longer. Don't miss out, comment CTN90, and we will get you set up for success before the new year. Yes, sir. I just threw up some made up gang signs in the middle of your ad. I was just like... (laughs) <laughs> I mean, you I know, know, he can't take you anywhere, apparently. I know, apparently not. Yeah, can't take you nowhere. <laughs> apparently you not. I'm saying, is that young man uh doing uh gang signs in the White House? <laughs> but we're still here. <laughs> Throw him up, shot it. <laughs> we're still nah, here. Man. We're nah, still man. here. There's, there's those out here that really live that life, man. I don't mean to mock you. I I you know what I mean I'm not cut out for it. Not at all. Not at all. That wasn't for us. But into the show, because we're into talking about the show. good life. This is what <laughs> this is what we're about, right? This is the life that we're made for, the good life. Uh get getting to the place where we are. Oh, there we go. Getting to the place where we are uh designing our ideal life, 
design our ideal life. Today, the conversation we want to dive into is a conversation around a topic that you probably hear a lot about and you're probably dealing with it. Yes, you, you, the person that's listening slash watching me point at you, do this. You are probably dealing with this. Today's topic, we're going to talk about debt, debt, debt. If you were like my daughter trying to read a word, debt, right? Debt is what we're talking about. Hey, why, why is it a weird language? <laughs> it, is, it is a weird language, but we're making it happen. The question is, why is there so much specifically why the U.S. is in so much debt? Why are why is our debt at an all time high? How does this affect us? The 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 American people or, you know, global citizens uh, who how, how does this impact us? Before we dive into this, though, I think we need to get a little bit of background on like what debt is, how we got to this spot. Uh, and we have our resident historian. Coach could be here in the building, resident historian. Right. Y'all didn't know. Y'all didn't know. But like this guy right. is a is a walking history book. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He shows it every once in a while, and I may have to cut him off so he doesn't give you the entire encyclopedia from eighteen fifty. Gotta let me cook. Um, but we're yeah, gonna let him cook. But we're gonna let him cook a little bit, and then we'll dive into some of the uh, topics around debt. But let's start it off, Coach. What, what do people? That's know? right. Gyms, tracks, courts, fields, and books. I smashed that. Words of wisdom, fruits for thought. I spit that. Come on, man. Come on, man. Y'all don't want this. Yeah. You know. All right. Let me let me use my top wisely. See, my partner wasn't ready for all that, man. That's on top. That's on top. I wasn't. <laughs> but with that said, I think it's very important that we talk a little bit of history uh, of money. Money. Debt, IOUs, mm. currency, mm. right? Not all necessarily the same thing, guys. So let me try to make this quick. Obviously, we all know we started out small communities, kept tally on little tally marks. Right. Everybody make goods and it was a bartering system. You trade something somebody wants. Now, in a pretty small community, we can do that in the head. Right. We can do that in the head. But as community started to grow, we merged more into commodities. Right. Where bigger, larger communities would decide kind of what is valuable. Right. Is it shells? Is it whale teeth? You know, what is it? Are they tobacco leaves? Right. And then they will hold on to quantities of that, trade for it, and use it to acquire other things that they wanted. Now, in the process of doing that, they actually invented debt, which are these IOUs. So think about these shells and these whale teeth or paper money, right? That they give and say, listen, now you can store, right? You can store a uh, 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 um whale teeth or whatever it is and use that to purchase things and essentially acquire or accrue um potential spending right so potential spending power then we move on to that you know whale teeth etc things of that nature you know it could rot it could do a lot of different things so we naturally get into the metal system why do we do that? Because it checks the boxes. It's portable. It's durable. It's hard to fake, right? Pretty hard to fake. It's divisible. I mean, I can, I can break it up. It's scarce enough. And it has global value among a wide spread of individuals who have decided to, to use it. The issue then became that people were, you know, for lack of better words, they were cutting the money, right? And for those that know, you know, right? They were debasing the money. So they would get the gold. They might get, you know, a brick of gold. And then they will melt that down in the kitchen. They will whip it, whip it, whip it. They will add some non-gold metals and they would get two bricks or four bricks or usually four if they do it correctly. And they're able to then pull it out and get more back for it. Baking now, soda. obviously... Baking soda, baking soda method, yes. Baking soda. Baking soda. Um, I, I think they use other metals. Oh, okay, but, uh, okay. you know, if they did use baking soda, I wasn't aware of that. Okay. Uh, I can neither confirm nor deny. Gotcha. Understood. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, later on, people realize, you know, carrying around large amounts of gold and silver, et cetera, is a little tough. So first, the Chinese come out and they say, hey, why don't we give you these paper IOUs? You leave your gold at home and we'll give you this paper IOUs. Now, the list that I, I, I talked about before, portable, durable, hard to forge, divisible, scarce, et cetera, all the things that metal, right, gold and silver particularly were, means that they themselves and, and gold and silver itself has intrinsic value within the world. It can, you can actually uh, 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 create circuit boards. You can, it's a great conductor, right? You can use it to line, you know, things in construction, engineering, and things of that nature. It has a use in and of itself, right? Whereas when we move to the paper IOUs for the gold, or you say backed by gold, now the paper in and of itself really doesn't have intrinsic value. You can't eat it. You can't use it. I guess you could burn it. You could write stuff on it, I guess. But the intrinsic value was low. Now, an interesting piece was that is people started cutting the paper. Mm. Right? <laughs> right? So you would go, maybe you would go to, you know, somebody that does that holds the gold for you, right? Because you want to hold that much gold in your house. They have maybe like a little military, a little militia or something. They can hold it for you. And then you give them, you know, 10 bricks of gold. Well, they go, uh, they go and they say, okay, we have 10 bricks of gold, but we can lend out, you know, 10 times that, right? We might hold on to a little bit of it and issue paper IOUs for way more than that. And we're good for it as long as nobody, not, as long as everybody doesn't come grab all their gold at once, we'll be good. You know, we'll do a little, you know, take from Peter to PayPal here situation, right? This is fractional banking. Now, this is really interesting because this is where you really want to pay attention. You can always check the reference point here. The Creature from Jekyll Island. This is a book you want to pick up. Mm, I, I listened to that book. It's great. Yes, sir. Creature from Jekyll Island. This is the one you want to pick up, guys. This is the one you want to pick up. And essentially, let me try to summarize the story here. So it's really about the Federal Reserve Act and how that impacted the world ever since uh, 1913. A group of individuals, you can read about this or whatever, meet somewhere and they meet in an island and they essentially decide that, hey, they're going to try to regulate our industry. So before they do that, let us go forward and say, hey, dad, I know you're going to ground me for sneaking out last night, but here, let me propose a better punishment. <laughs> All right. So they get ahead of the curve. They say, we want regulation. They write their own regulation and get it approved and essentially pull a fast one. Now, what that means, what the two major things that come out of that is that they're able, they get the right to regulate their own industry, banking, and this is actually not something they wanted. They were they think they could have gotten, but they ended up getting it. Is Congress then gives them their authority to issue the nation's money. Now, remember what I mean by that is now we have to call it currency, right? The nation's currency, not the nation's money, the nation's currency. So they issue, they print the IOUs, the paper that the IOUs are on. And then the U.S. government, right, or, or essentially borrows that IOU or gets that IOU and they owe the Federal Reserve that money plus interest back. Right. So that's how that works. OK, mm -hmm. they print the dollars. They, they they essentially get the right to issue the nation's money, the dollars. Right. So they issue the actual dollars that we use, loan it to the U.S. government and the U.S. government has to pay it back with interest. Now, the issue is, the issue is the U.S. government doesn't have any money and doesn't generate anywhere near enough money, like real money. Not currency, but real money, real goods and serve, and serve real gold. They don't generate actual gold. In fact, they've sold off most of their gold. And in 19, I mean, 71, Nixon abandoned the gold standard to help inflation Right. So governments who are out there lending to the United States, say they look left, they look right. They're like, man, they're doing real good over there, man. They spending all that money. I wonder if they can pay me back. 
Mm. Let me go ahead and get mine before they run out. Let me get my gold before they run out because that's what that is. That dollar is debt. It's an IOU to be paid in gold, right? So they have all of this debt from the United States, other nations, et cetera. Now they're freaked out and they say, hey, late, listen, let me get let me get the, the gold that you owe us. And as a result, Nixon goes, you know what? Actually, we're not going to do that rule anymore. Now, yeah, you don't you don't get any gold. You just got to trust us that we got you. Right. You just trust us that we got you because we're not pegging the dollar to the gold that backs the dollar in the first place. What does this mean? This means now the U.S. government doesn't really doesn't have to have anything back in it, back in the money that it's using besides just the, essentially the military. Mm -hmm. Right. This is really interesting. And, and OG, this is the way we bring it home here. And we 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 we. we really dive in is how does this affect us? So 1920s, they were already playing with going on and off the gold standards, mm -hmm. gold standards, right? And we saw how life changed. 1920s, 30s, right? A construction worker could go to work, have eight kids, wife at home taking care of the kids, and their income would cover and take care of, of the whole family. Mm -hmm. By the 70s, mom had to go to work because the money, the IOUs, the dollars is now worth less, 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 and less. So there are more dollars chasing fewer and fewer goods and lower quality goods, mm -hmm. right? So 70s, mom has to go to work. 90s, you can look at the data. Families stop saving pretty much. 2000s, Families start borrowing an insane amount of money. And now just to maintain this, this, the quality of the same quality of life that they had, not even the same, actually less mm -hmm. in terms of if you look at the, the GDP. And now what we're looking at here is that borrowing, that debasing of the dollar continues to go up astronomically. And people are borrowing at a rate that's also growing astronomically. Uh, meaning this thing is headed for a collision course, my brother. What, uh, what, 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 what did I miss? What's the take from that? Listen, you, you, you said a bunch and it's a great, uh, accurate understanding of kind of how we got started in this place. A lot of those things you talk about from, you know, shells to leather money and all that, like that's all, you know, 2000 years ago, right. <laughs> that, that's been around for a long time. And now we get to present day and we see kind of the mess that the government has made when it comes to borrowing money and lending money. That's really what we're talking about. It's these IOUs, this I have it, I'll I'll give it to you, then I'll get this X, X amount back. Uh, something that you said that was real important, I hope everybody picked up on, is the relationship between like the Fed, the Federal Reserve and the United States government. You might hear this type of stuff on social, but just know, like, again, the Fed prints the the bills, right? They print the money that the U.S. uses as currency, right? They print it. But what's funny is because it's kind of like if we took not on, on a grand scale, just took on a human level, us, you know, a personal level, individual level, trying to borrow from a bank. This would be the equivalent of the bank looking at us, seeing that we don't have a job, we don't have any income, and we owe a hundred thousand dollars to other <laughs> to other to other banks, and yet they're gonna keep giving us money. Right? That's what's happening because the United States is 31, almost 32 trillion dollars in debt, meaning that's what we owe. And the Federal Reserve continues to print more money to be able to have more money in circulation so we can loan out more of it to other countries. But like you said, this just devalues 
the currency because again we see this this is economics right just where there's more supply of the dollar it devalue or the currency it devalues the currency because there's too much in circulation it stops and then once nixon takes us off that gold standard now it's really not worth anything except for what our what we promised to other people right right, the, right real, real, real quick right there Ozzy. let's clarify this real quick so the reason why the gold standard was so important, um, and I don't l- 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 add, add anything I miss here, is because, guys, the, the the printed money is an IOU for the gold, meaning that it's saying, hey, I'm good for the gold. It's just at home, right? When you take, when the when the printing of the IOU is no longer based on how much gold you have at home, now you can just print. You, you could just print whatever it is and it's not backed up by anything. So why is that a problem? Well, one, that means that the money that was that is already in circulation is going to be worth less. Because you just you, you polluted it, you poured more, you poured more water into the Kool-Aid. Right. So now the Kool-Aid is not as sweet. Mm-hmm. Right. So. Not only that, so if you were a saver, you were losing money. Now you were encouraged to borrow more because the only people that won after the gold standard was removed are those that were that had the IOUs. Yeah. I was just I was I was looking up there was a there's a country, I forget what it was, that had that had like um like a like a hundred thousand dollar bill. Like it, like <laughs> they, they started printing bills that were like a hundred thousand dollars because there was no value to it at all. So it's like, right. I got you take you know. a dollar. You, you take you take a you take wh- where you used to be able to buy your all your groceries for a dollar fifty. Now a dollar. Now you need a hundred and fifty to get the same same groceries. That's right. That's right. And that's, that's what's happening. And that's where it's affecting people's pockets. And that's where it's affecting people. You know, you'll hear the terms of inflation and things like that pop up or just, you know, the cost of goods going up and that's exactly what that is. Yeah. Right. Inflation. Yeah, exactly. Right. And it's affecting our pockets because the rate of um, um, income, right? Like wage, wage growth hasn't, hasn't grown in the same ways. So essentially like you're, like you said in your illustration, right? Like back in the seventies, one household, uh, could have a single person, you know, a father, a mother, whoever it was at the time is probably the father at the time being the breadwinner. Mom could stay home, take care of kids, yada, 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 do that. As we progress to the place that we are now, uh, I'm seeing videos about two parents working, right? Dual working households and the things that now we have to pay for. Uh, the big thing now, I don't think this is even what, what we were talking about, but the big things now that people are talking about uh, are is child care. The price of child care being about the same amount as living. There's people that have mortgages that are the same price as sending their kid to daycare, right? And these prices and these things have continued to go up over and over uh, and over again over the past, you know, 30, 40, 50 years. And now we're here and it's affecting the 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 middle America the most. Right. Obviously, it affects everyone that deals with money, but it affects middle America the most because now we're at an all time high in debt, consumer mm-hmm. debt personally. But as a country, we're at an all time high in debt. And so really just figuring out what are the solutions for people that are saying, okay, like I like we can do this on what I call the 101 level, right? Where we're just diving into credit card debt, personal loans, student loans, cars, furnitures, right? We don't we can get into the mortgage side of things, the house, but like just how much debt we're actually in. If if the average person looked at their net worth, you took your assets subtracted your liabilities, right? Like where, where are you sitting? And if you chose to not include your primary residence in that, I know a lot of people do calculate their, you know, their house and their net worth conversation. But if you chose to not 
put your primary residence in your net worth conversation and then look at assets and liabilities, be curious to see where people sit. I, I, I have a feeling I know because I do this right. We sit down with a lot of people and we have these conversations and most people only have their asset being right a house or you know a small brokerage account or something along those lines. But the debt is so high these days that it negates all of it. When someone has thirty, forty thousand dollars in credit card debt, when you know a higher income earner because they went to school to get some higher education has a hundred, a hundred and fifty thousand dollars of student loan debt, like all that stuff still adds up to your debt level. And so we're we're seeing this being at an all time high, but we also have to understand one how we got here, and then two what are the solutions of how 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 we need to pay attention to this on a one hundred one level. We just got to get granular. We got to look at where all the money's going and what interest rates are. We got to educate ourselves on how interest actually works when we talk debt and have this debt conversation. I mean, one of the main factors are interest rates. When we hear, um, you know the debt in the economy and what the Fed does, right? They're always talking about what? Interest rates. How many basis points has th have things gone up? Because interest rates, right? The way that the Fed controls interest rates affects all other things in the economy, affects all assets, affects all pricing for everything. But most of us don't know how even interest really works, how compound interest works. And again, we can get very granular with like, how do you look at compound interest like in your household? Do you, there's there's something that teaches it that we teach a bunch. It's called the rule of 72. So if you're thinking about like your credit cards or your car loan or anything you're paying interest on, the way you find this out, the rule of 72 is a mathematic. It's actually a, an equation that says if you take the interest you make or right being charged, divide that into the number 72, it'll tell you how long it takes for that money to double. Right. And when it works against you, that's when we're talking about debt and the interest that grows on debt. It works in your favor if we start having the investing conversation, which we'll have on another show, right, about the investing side and compound interest. But typically this works. This is it works against us in debt because let's just take the average credit card, the average credit card um, interest rate. Would you know if I, if I ask you the question, bro, like what what's the average interest rate on a credit card? Uh, 18%, 18 to 20, 18, you know, ranging up to 26. Spot on, spot on, right? So right around about 19%, 20%, said 18. That's about the average, that's the average credit card interest rate. What the rule of 72 says is if you divide that, that number into the number 72, it'll tell you how long it'll take for the money to double on the side of the credit card company. So think about it. If it's 20%, 20 into 72 gives you three, three and a half, right? So that means if you pay just like minimum payments to your credit card, it wouldn't go anywhere because that money is doubling in three and a half, in three and a half years. If you had a $10,000 balance and then didn't pay it in three and a half years, it'd be $20,000. Three and a half years, it doubles, right? So at the end of the day, because we have these high interest rates on credit cards and things like that, we don't even have the ability to really power our way out of debt the same way the government doesn't really have a way to power themselves out of debt. So while you said like we're on a crash course, like we're on a collision course, it's because that 31 trillion, that 32 trillion, the government doesn't have a real way to get that paid off. No, not and at it, all. And it is collecting interest also. It's a little bit lower right. than, a, it's a lot lower than a credit card, but still gaining interest so uh yeah i mean it's growing at an exponential rate man we're talking about i think maybe 33.7 last i looked at it I'm, I'm not you know i could be off um but i mean it, to summarize but this is where we're at on, on on a higher level and why this matters and why we'll never be able to pay off the debt first and foremost the 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 the, the, the we're being forced to work harder and more hours to get dollars that purchase fewer and lesser quality goods. Mm. That's what's happening. All right. Oh, you guys can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Uh, you're you're kind of breaking up a little bit. Hey, shout out to you, Miss T, on that rule of 72, knowing it. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you guys hear me? Uh, I, I hear. What do you mean breaking up? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Pixel on lagging. On, on yeah. what? Instagram? Yeah, on, on, on IG. 
Wow. Okay. Um, let me know if that continues, guys. But I don't know what uh what to do, what, what to do here besides stand strong in the face of adversity. That's right. We're standing strong, and everybody on IG, click the pinned link and jump into the Facebook group because we're live in there, or we're live over on TikTok. So if if it's not coming through, you can feel free to find us somewhere else. Um, That's right. But. But yeah. yeah. So going. let's let's bring this home right here and then let's maybe merge a little bit into them. What can we do? Uh, you know, summarize what we can do on an individual level as a family unit. I think that's really the key is at the family level and then the community level. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I think that's really the key here. But like I said, we're being we're being I got TikTok. OK, nice. We'll see you over on TikTok. We're being forced to work fewer to work harder and more hours for dollars that purchase fewer and less quality and lesser quality goods. That's number one. Number two, the government needs to borrow more and more currency, right? Because it's not money. It's not worth anything by itself. It's fiat based. By the way, every fiat system in the history of the world has failed 100% of the time. Let me repeat that. Every fiat system, which we are in now, has failed or collapsed in world history 100% of the time. Not 99, right? 100% of the time. So that's that's what we got to look at here. That's I hope people know that. Like, I hope people know that, like, I know we grow up in this era, but, like, empires fall all the time in human history, right? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is... They've been, but, but, you know, the crazy thing is we don't even have to go that far. Just World War uh, post World War Three, a, a handful, a, a couple dozen have failed. A couple dozen fiat based currencies. Yeah. Since World War Two. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, we don't even got to go into the age of Mongolia. <laughs> right. We don't have to go that far. Sure. Um, that's that's so that, true. And, and that's the system we're in right now. The government needs to borrow more and more money, uh, more and more currency from the federal reserve which is neither federate nor does it hold reserves <laughs> right they need to borrow that the uh, the printed i i o u notes now honestly which they don't really even print them anymore they just click mm -hmm. right so they don't even actually they don't even spend the money on the paper anymore they just click click and move move that money over and the, fed, the 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 government is borrowing that and needs to borrow more of it because when they borrow, they have to pay back with interest. So how are they going to get that interest if their only way of getting money is to borrow? Mm. Or their only way to get currency is to borrow. So they borrow at an interest rate and then they have to go back and borrow more to cover what they need to spend to keep everything running and the interest that's been building up so even i mean bro even at point one percent that thing is going to add up over time and that's what we see an exponential growth in the debt as a result of that for every trillion dollar uh we hit every trillion additional trillion dollar in record time mm -hmm. every single one so 30 30 was faster than 29 was faster than 28 trillion and that continues to grow Right. right. So then the third piece is here, and this is where we're coming in with G here is, is at the base of what you teach and at the base of what we talk about here in terms of money is you, you, you got to you got to get your cash flow right. That's right. You got to get your cash flow right. And once you get your cash flow right, you can then purchase assets that generate cash flow so you can go ahead and buy back your time. Right. And then once you do that, then you can focus on okay. Then you can look at things, and this is where a lot of people disagree. But I, 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 I firmly agree. But you can look at, you know, besides purchasing assets that generate income, and also taking care of your your expenses, however large those may be. The only you know, and also giving the money away, right? The only other thing to really do is to save, and you 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 you, you, you don't want to save in dollars. We just told you what's going on, right? So that's this is where I've always like I I had to do my own digging because I didn't really know 
But people would be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Well, the only other logical thing to save and not invest, I'm not saying invest, right? I'm not saying you invest in this. I'm saying the only other thing that really makes sense to save in is what is a hedge to the dollar. And the only other thing that's really a hedge to the dollar, you know, is gold. It's going back to gold. And we're seeing that now, OG. If you remember, it wasn't that long ago where I predicted, I said, there will be gold back digital currencies. Didn't I say that? Mm -hmm. I remember. Didn't I say that? Mm -hmm. I said that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there will be gold back digital currencies because it only makes sense. It only made sense to me, you know, when I really look at it. I'm not calling for the collapse or anything necessarily. I'm not saying all that. I'm just painting the picture based on my understanding, OG. You go ahead and you fill in the gaps. Wow. No, no yeah. I think uh, this this conversation is necessary. And it's true. You don't, I mean, long term, this is, again, Ray Dalio talks about the long term debt cycle, right? So we're at the end of this kind of or the beginning of the downside of the downturn of this long term debt cycle, ba basically meaning that like, you know, the US won't be the reserve currency of the world for, you know, who knows, but not for long, right? Um, could be 10 years, could be 20 years, could be two years, right? If there's a war, <laughs> right? Could be, could be any time, who knows? Um, I also want to add the note for everyone that is listening, because again, I posted something like this before that um, uh, at the end of the day, like there's a lot of fear mongering around some of these financial things, lots of fear, fear. So just like the media understands this, right? People in Wall Street, people that run money, they understand this, right? Um, um, humans are emotional based creatures and fear does a lot for us. If we're scared of something, we have deep fears. It moves markets. We take money out of places. We put money places. We start doing a bunch of stuff when we're scared. So a lot of things that you might hear out there in the world, right? Or a lot of things you might hear out there on social are really there to, to make you scared, right? To get you very, very scared. So you make illogical decisions with your financial life. So both can be true and both are true that yes, right? It's not going to be smart long-term to hold dollars. It's going to be a lot better, like could be said to hedge, to have some forms of stored wealth that actually will hold up in, in other arenas, whether you need to trade globally, whether you just need to trade with somebody else because there's value there. But it's not a tomorrow thing, right? Because again, for a foundational part, like you still need six months of emergency funds set aside. We're talking, we're having a 202, 303, potentially even 404 level conversation right now because we know some of you guys that are listening, like you have it. You have some of the foundational things. You you have paid attention to some of your cash flow. You do have six months to 12 months worth of your income set aside in the bank, right? You're funding something or a few things long-term potentially to gain compound interest on your side. You might have a, a, a rental, right? You might dabbled in real estate, right? You might have a little bit of a portfolio there, right? Your insurance might be in place. You might have a lot of this stuff in place. So now we're going to talk on that next level of like, okay, well, what's what are the next things to do and how should you be thinking about it? So from that standpoint, if you have all these things in place, your foundation is good, then sure, the stuff that we're talking about is what you should be thinking about. Moving some things maybe out of cash, putting it into the gold, right? The commodity side, right? Or precious metal side of things that can be back. Buying yourself a cash flowing asset, buying yourself something that appreciates using that capital to go do that. Absolutely. These are the things that are going to stand the test of time, right? America is for sale. There's a ton of land for sale that it might not be developed on, but just having land can be a good thing whenever shit hits the fan, right? <laughs> right? Just that that is just the, the way that it goes. So if you can now put yourself in a position to say, I have a foundational part that is uh, good, right? F foundational part uh, is, is, is set. And now we're building on that foundation. Now we want to start layering in some of these conversations of just where your money is sitting 
And ideally, you want it to be in some type of a hard asset that's going to stand the test of time when the dollar goes to nothing. But whenever not, that is. Not right? if, but when. Right. We not don't if, know when. Right. Um, but to your point, OG, I think there's an order of operations here. For sure. Uh, there's an understanding of the mega game that is occurring, what is happening on a global level. Uh, but there's still an order of operations uh, as to how to proceed. And that's what we talk about on the show. That's what you just broke broke down. Uh, we've got a nice infographic here that we'll drop in the group because infographics are awesome. <laughs> they are. Okay. Because infographics are awesome. That will show you, you know, what are the one, two, three, four, five, six steps to be taken there. And I, I, I will push to have, you know, commodities on there as uh, as uh, I know OG is not as big of a fan as I am. Uh, but I think it's important to understand the bigger game, uh, you know, because we do have people. We do have folks. We do have folks that have have worked hard, have put their ducks in a row and are looking at, you know, uh, 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 what, what, what should I be? What should I be? You know, what should I be making my midterm investments in? Right. You know, what, 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 what am I, what, what, is, what is, that's why we talk about what is my, and I don't know. Yeah. I was, I, was, uh, I see that on, uh, on, 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 what is that on TikTok? Yeah, it's TikTok. But they yeah, said, they, what's but up? They, I don't know. They said they can't hear me on that side or they're, they're saying they couldn't hear me, but. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. We'll okay. figure it All out. Right. We'll fi figure it out. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get it. We got to do a mic check. Mic check when we hop on next week. Yeah. But the episode will be dropped. Get in the group. The episode will be dropped. Uh, it's good in the group. You know, you want to, you want to, that's the best place to get us guys is in the Facebook group. We get in there Fridays. We get in there uh, 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 Wednesdays, obviously. So, you know, next one, definitely make sure you hop in the group. If you're on Instagram, you can click on that link. If you are on TikTok, I don't know if you can, but it's somewhere around here. Um, not, but now you can hear me. I'm, I'm glad you can hear me now. That's awesome. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now I can hear. But him. still, but still, find us in the group. Blue sweater person. <laughs> now I can hear blue sweater person. That's great. No, but shout, uh, out, just... shout out to this person, right? This they're just checking in for the first time on the live. They're just checking in. They said this is the first time that they heard that they uh, are tuning in on the podcast. So we we appreciate you uh, even That's check right. checking you. in and uh, leaving some comments and engaging again find us on all these different places whether it's here tiktok when we get the audio right right instagram we get the audio right but just like coach said uh could, could be here said uh in the facebook group and on youtube that's where you'll find us the most we're live inside of our facebook group but all of this stuff goes into youtube at the good life visual audio podcast youtube channel that's Hold right subscribe. that's right and guys, we'll wrap up here. We'll continue the conversation. This is a big conversation that we're dicing up into parts. We're going to examine each part into detail. We're going to go ahead and give you the context. We're going to bring a little history to it because, you know, history is my first love. And uh, we're going to make sense of it. You know, I like to put things in context, right? Don't, you know, give me the surrounding context of why we're doing things in this way so that you teach me how to fish not just give me fish so I know how to maneuver things because I understand the bigger picture of how everything is working, right? If we don't know the general objective of basketball is to put the hoop, I mean, is to put the ball in the hoop, right? Then we don't, you know, all that extra stuff you're doing on the court doesn't really matter, does it? Right. You got to know the general end of the game and we play to win the game. Shout out Coach Edwards, part of the coaching family. One of our respected elders, one of our respected OGs uh, gave us that beautiful, beautiful gem of a quote. And uh, we play to win the game. That's right. And guys, we invite you to join us in the group here. But I will give you that, you know, in the words of another OG in the coaching fraternity, you know, Coach Mike Tomlin, we want volunteers, not captives. Right. Mm -hmm. We want volunteers, not captives. Uh, we want, we want, we want the, 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 I don't know about the bends of the world, but you know, definitely not the Antonio Browns of the world. Okay. That's my sports thing here. And I'm getting lost here guys. So we appreciate you for joining us. OG, any last words? That was it, man. You said, you said it all. Got to go out there and put some more focus in on the stuff we talked about today, getting ourselves in the right position to know what to do 
with our money, not being in a ton of debt and understanding how to really win this money game out here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Good Life. If you enjoy this episode, please take a moment to subscribe and like our channel. If you have any feedback or suggestions for future episodes, please leave us a comment down below. If you're listening to the podcast audio version, we appreciate you just as much. Thank you for tuning in to The Good Life Show. We believe that everyone has the potential to live their best life, and we hope our show helps you get that one step closer to achieving your goal. If you know someone who would benefit from our show, please share it with them, and thank you for your continued support. That's it for another week's episode here on The Good Life. We'll see you next week for another inspiring conversation.